traders and welcome to a new day trading strategy video of mine. <clears throat> Today's video, we're going to be going over how to scalp BitMEX funding. I did a video on how to trade BitMEX funding in a more medium term to long term trading approach, but today we're going to be looking at what happens in the few minutes before and what happens in the minutes after BitMEX funding uh, hits. So this is a slide that I had up for my previous BitMEX funding video. And again, this applies to more of a long-term trading approach. Basically, in 15 seconds, what that video talked about was when we see a lot of positive funding, that means that there's a lot of bullish sentiment, so we expect the price to go down. And when we see a lot of negative funding, that's negative sentiment, and we expect price to go up for BitMEX. But short-term, things are gonna be very different than long-term uh, funding. You know, 10-minute interval is gonna be very different than a 24-hour interval. So this is what happens typically right before funding hits and right after funding hits. If you wanna pause the video here, you can and maybe take a screenshot of this or just read it over once. But this is something that uh, does happen time and time again. And this time I actually collected statistics on how often it does happen. Uh, but just really what I'm talking about here is just before funding hits, so let's say just before negative funding hits, remember that when negative funding hits, that means that the longs are getting paid and the shorts are the ones doing the paying. So the shorts pay the longs. So you would rather probably be, you know, all things being equal, you probably want to be the one receiving the money and not the one paying the money. So what typically happens is right before that negative funding hits, Buying is incentivized. Uh, shorts are going to exit their positions because they don't want to pay. And longs may enter positions because they want to receive that funding. Now, of course, for every buyer, for every long futures contract, there has to be a short futures contract. You know, everyone knows that. For every uh, long, there must be a short. So really what we're looking at here is more of the short-term traders who are trying to uh, trade funding or, or just scalp short-term are really the ones who we're looking at. So when I say, hey, we have a lot of buying here, or hey, we have a lot of longs here, uh, what I'm looking at is what are what are traders doing, what are the short-term minded traders doing to, to make plays off this funding? And what we want to do is position ourselves before these traders make these plays. So really what that means is after that negative funding hits, we know that selling is going to be incentivized because shorts who had just exited their positions so they don't have to pay funding, they're going to want to re-enter if they're still short. Uh, they're going to re-enter their previously closed positions. And the longs may exit positions because they just received the funding. Uh, so if I didn't really want to go long, but I, I went long just to get a really good funding rate, uh, then I might go long, I might receive that funding, and then I might exit my position shortly after. So when negative funding hits, typically we're going to expect in the very short term, within about 10 minutes, the price is going to go down. When positive funding hits in the short term, we expect price to go up. But in the long term, typically when we have a period of lots of negative funding, we expect price to go up. And in the long term, when we have a long period of uh, positive funding, we expect price to go uh, down. So these are the statistics that I did, uh, that, I, that I gathered here. And I know this is a tiny sample size, and, and I do recognize that. This is only a 25 sample size from December uh, so I took 25 funding intervals from the times of December 17th to December 28th, which is today. And I recorded all negative funding and all positive funding. And what I did was I just wrote a minus if in that one minute price had gone down uh, from the beginning of when funding hit. And after 10 minutes, if price was lower than when the negative funding had hit, I, I would write a minus. So what I found was that 72% of the time, price went down uh, after, in one minute when funding was negative. And 76% of the time, 19 out of 25, I found that price actually bent, price was lower than it had been uh, when funding had hit when funding was negative. So typically, you know, this, this is showing us that when funding is negative, in the very short term, we expect price to, to go down. And, and you know that's what happened here. We had negative funding, and price did go down about 0.26. And after 10 minutes, it was still lower. 
but in the medium term, it actually did price did go up, uh, which which is which is really interesting. And if you look at another short term pattern here, this one's beautiful. You can see in the very short term, what may have happened is you see this buying here that where we go from here, uh, where we go from here to here, we have about a 0.25 increase in price on BitMEX. And then we get this big drop when negative funding hits. Well, what's happening? Well, shorts are exiting their positions because they don't want to pay funding at six o'clock. Longs are entering positions because they want to receive funding. Funding hits. Why is the sell-off occurring? Well, the sell-off is occurring because the shorts who had exited their positions around here because they don't want to pay uh, funding may re-enter their positions because they just want to short. Longs may exit their positions because they just received the funding. Uh, and then this just sells off, as, as you can see, down to there. But again, in the more medium term, price does go up. Uh, and I think the same pattern kind of applies here. We have negative funding, short term, price goes down. Medium term, price stays flat slash kind of goes up. Uh, if you can see just here, yep. So in the one minute after funding had hit, we can see that... Uh, Price went down about 0.08. I mean, like that's like nothing. Uh, but after 10 minutes, it, it stayed, uh, you know, lower here, as you can see, and it and it did go lower there as a result of that negative funding. But this one, we do we see that previous period of buying? Yeah, we we see a little bit of buying right before. And again, that period of buying is because traders may want to buy so that they don't have to pay funding or that they receive funding, uh, as buying is incentivized before negative funding hits. And uh, selling is incentivized right after negative funding hits, as I had uh, said before. So you can see that right there. So I'm not surprised by this statistic that 76% of the time price was lower after 10 minutes after negative funding. Um, that doesn't really surprise me. And what this means is that, yeah, it's not a terrible idea to sell right after funding hits. Um, but if anyone's wondering, uh, if anyone here is trading on BitMEX, you know, by all means, do not try to make this kind of funding play um, on maximum leverage, because that, of course, would be a disastrous idea. And what you can do if you want to trade this with a safe amount of leverage is you wait for funding to hit. I, I've typically found from all the results that I gather that it's usually more profitable to trade after funding hits than it is to trade before funding hits. So what I find is that a lot of the times, I mean, this is a really bad example. Uh, let's go here. A lot of the times what some traders might want to do, like here, is try to buy to receive the funding. But I found that it's typically more profitable to wait till funding hits and then to, to make that trade. Uh, it would have been better there, you know, because buying here probably would not have been the best idea. Shorting here would have been pretty nice. Uh, similar situation here. Buying here right before funding hits is probably not a great idea. Even though you do receive that funding. That's right, uh, that number that popped up there. You receive that funding. That's that's not a lot. It's, it's just typically better just to short, you know, with a limit order. Or if, I mean, if you really want to, a, a market sell order when negative funding hits. Now, that's negative funding. Positive funding here, you can see, th this is, again, not a beautiful example by any means. Um, really not much happened here. I think that's because the positive funding was only 0.01. Uh, besides, price kind of went up a bit after positive funding. But basically, if you want to make plays off of funding, I would recommend in the very short term to just, uh, if it's negative, to try to short right after funding hits. If it's positive, try to buy right after funding hits. And I would say only make these kinds of trades if funding is significant enough. You know, if you're seeing 0.01 or negative 0.01, I, I just don't see why you'd want to take a trade there. Um, or like, you know, like these, like, come on, that's like barely, uh, not a lot of funding, not a lot of reason to, to do much here. But when we get more significant funding like here, I mean, even this one's not like really even that significant. Um, yeah, so like stuff like this is typically going to be a little bit better to make plays off of, you know, you can see price does go down there. Good. Uh, you can see here, it looks like price did go down there, I think. But we can go uh, spy on this guy if we want. 
Yeah, th this one's interesting. This one, we can see that this, uh, we had already had a short-term downtrend, and then we get that quick uh, down move here, and then a continued down move here. Again, I, I would wait for really significant funding, you know, stuff like, like this, to, to try to make these short-term plays, because this funding was negative 0.0496, not, you know, crazy, but probably better than, than most. And th this may have been okay to, to short, you know, because you could have received this. I mean, you could have made a profit off of, uh, you know, like a 1% drop with a drawdown, meaning price moves against you about half a percent, which you're probably not going to trade your stop loss or anything unless you, you know, of course, 100x, then this would burn you. Another reason not to not to 100x. Um, but yeah, this probably wouldn't have been a, a good trade just to make a very short term play off that. Uh, very negative funding rate, you know, you could uh, think about maybe shorting here. Uh, but then in the medium term, again, price does go up. Uh, and the longer term price does go up as well. And positive funding, you know, I just from December 18th to December, uh, December 17th to December 28th, we didn't have a lot of positive funding. But the few times that we did have it, typically, same thing. When, when funding was positive right after, after one minute, price typically went up. After 10 minutes, price typically went up as well. So it's the same kind of pattern as with as with negative. Um, but as always, we're, we're gonna wanna wait for more significant numbers because a lot of those positive funding uh, bars were only like plus 0.01%, or, uh, which which really isn't much we can, we can do, a, much that we can uh, trade with. So that's really all I had planned for today's video. More of a simpler video today than um, you know some some previous videos that I've done in the past that have not been so simple. Um, but yeah, I would recommend try to take your own data and, and, and try to take your own statistics on this stuff and and try to find the patterns. You know, try to see what typically happens before, what typically happens after, what's typically the more profitable play. Personally, like like I've you know repeated myself a million times saying this, but. I don't think it's a great idea to try to position yourself to receive funding. That, you know, I think is what a lot of retail traders might try to do. Um, but sometimes that can really get you burned when price just immediately goes the other direction, uh, you know, right after that funding hits. Typically, it's going to be better to position yourself afterward and try to uh, make a play that way. That, that might be something that you uh, can do. Um, there, there's gotta be someone out, someone out there who can program this or, or find a way to back test every time that funding has been negative or every time that funding has been positive, what has been the price change over a period of one minute, 10 minutes, 15, you know, 30, one hour, and then try to find more detailed statistics than what I gathered because, you know, 25, uh, I, I gathered 25 data points here and nine here. So that's only 34. A, a, a sample size of 34 is quite small. Uh, so maybe, you know, you could look at your own statistics and, and try to see, hey, I don't actually agree with Bitcoin trading challenge. I actually think that in the very short term, when funding is negative, the price typically skyrockets or, you know, something like that. Uh, because it's always important to, uh, you know, take your own statistics and, and look at your own patterns. Uh, but, but again, I think it is important to think of the theory, w which I had put up here, which is why do I, why do we expect what to happen and, and why should it happen? And then you want to look for, do the statistics support this theory? And I've found that the statistics typically do, because this just kind of makes sense to me of just, uh, traders trying to make a profit and, and, and how that works. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit on this and repeating myself. So I think I'm going to want to end this video soon. Yep. If you guys have any questions on uh, short term BitMEX funding plays, you know, tr ways to try to make money within a few minutes off this thing, uh, then you can leave a comment on the Discord. You can send me a private message uh, via email or uh, Twitter or, you know, however you want to communicate uh, in this in this day. So, yeah, with that, happy trading.